back to my channel if you're new hi my name is Kiura welcome for today's video as I'm sure you've seen by the intro and the title of this video I'm doing a what I eat in a weekend starting on Friday the only major dietary I guess requirement that I have is that it's vegetarian and I do not eat eggs unless it's in a baked good but other than that I try to eat intuitively or just like a normal person when I actually feel like eating and I also eat quite balanced rather than being micromanaged or leaving out any other food groups. Also, you should know before we start that I just in general have a lot of water. It's not that I do it intentionally. I always tend to have like a huge bottle of water sitting next to me and I have about four of those a day. But I didn't really think it was that important to show you. I might mention it here or there in the video, though I really do drink a lot of water throughout my week and on my weekend. So starting off with Friday, this is what I have basically for breakfast almost every single day of the week. I just take whatever yogurt is in the fridge. Usually it is plain yogurt, but here I have low-fat blackberry and cherry yogurt, which was so delicious. And I put enough to fill almost half the bowl. And then put in whatever fruit I have, frozen or unfrozen. Here I just had strawberries and green grapes, which I washed. I see that a lot of people actually don't wash their fruit or vegetables, but it's so important that you do that because you don't know what pests or microorganisms could have been on. And also if you do not eat organic food, then sometimes there can be pesticides and things like that, which can be quite harmful to you in terms of the chemicals you are introducing to your body. So definitely try and wash all of your produce and also your meat if you do eat it before cooking. I then put in whatever granola I have here. I had the Future Life one, which I've been trying for this month, which is really, really good. It has things like oats, coconut, banana, berries, etc and i also put in some nuts and chia which i do every time such as some cashews or almonds or whatever i have but i don't know i guess either my camera like conked out or i just didn't film it which is probably what happened since i'm so forgetful so that is basically what i ate for my morning i was also just watching new girl it's been my latest obsession and that's what i've been watching For lunch, in this house we do leftovers. I see that a lot of YouTubers actually don't show that they have leftovers, but that creates such a waste unless you're creating enough just to feed your family for that meal. But in this house we always make extra so that we have leftovers for the next day as well as for the next meal. So for lunch on this day I made a deconstructed falafel plate or falafel pita, whatever you want to name it. The previous night my mom made some homemade falafels and I made this Greek salad with the normal things such as olives, feta, etc. And I also made this garlic yogurt sauce, which I showed in my what I eat in a week video. I also threw in some avocado, lemon and balsamic glaze, which is so much better than normal balsamic vinegar. It's actually quite sweet and sour because it's been reduced over the heat, which is so great over any salads or sandwiches that you may have. I just had some of everything that was there and heated my falafels as well as my pita. I only had about a half of pita and shared the other half with my mom just because it can be extra filling and I'd rather spend that eating falafels and like the actual salad and yogurt. For a snack, I had two Hungarian tarts from a bakery and as you can see, it was eggless. Hindus do not eat meat or alcohol. I mean, drink alcohol. And also, many take it a step further and don't even have eggs in like their pastries or biscuits or things like that. And so you'll see a lot of Indian bakeries tend to have eggless desserts and pastries such as this Hungarian tart. And if you haven't had a Hungarian tart before, it's just like a biscuit with a jam center and caster sugar dusted over the top. So yeah, this really wasn't the healthiest thing I could have had as a snack. But as I said, it's all about balance, which sometimes includes having unhealthy things. And then for my second snack, which I had sort of three hours before going to bed, I tried to make sure that I eat at least three hours before going to bed. Otherwise, I get terrible heartburn. But for my second snack, I had a nachi with these tarts that my mom made, which is basically referred to as puri pata, with puri being a dough bread pastry sort of thing, and pata being a leafy sort of good, which is seasoned with different spices. And then for dinner, it was basically the same thing as lunch, except there was no pita since I had two snacks and felt less hungry than usual. I also had a glass of Coke. I am definitely trying to cut down on my cold drink intake. It is very bad. I'm not a very big sweet person, except for like pastry pastries and ice cream maybe but cold drink is definitely one of my faults and I'm trying to decrease it just because it's really really not good for you in any sort of way 
but I'm human at the end of the day and sometimes I feel like it so now instead of having one glass I might have a half a glass with my meal if I so feel like having and then on to Saturday I had a handful of strawberries and one Hungarian tart when I came back I had two vada as my snack which is an Indian snack made from brown dal or yellow lentils which is made with some onion spices greens and is deep fried as well I then went out for dinner with a couple of my friends it was super last minute there was a beautiful sunset as we were going and I just had to capture it and put it even though it has nothing to do with my video <laughs> I met up with them in Santon at a place named walk and roll it's an asian restaurant and we all opted for the buffet menu which was not like a normal open buffet for obvious reasons with what's currently going on but it was more so like a set menu and then you can choose whatever you want from there for like a set price no matter how much or how little you have so i had two vegetable spring rolls and also had four pieces of vegetarian californian rolls. let me know if you guys like sushi i know it's quite a controversial food as well as if you do have sushi do you like having it with all the content condiments like soy sauce, wasabi, pickle ginger, do you like having it plain? Let me know down in the comments below. I then also had a mini bowl of veg fried noodles, which I actually forgot to take a video of, but here's my empty bowl and a picture my friend took with all of our food, so you can sort of see what the stir fry and the other stuff they ordered looked like. When we were there, we got super, super full and contemplated for like an hour whether we should stay and have the large dessert that came with the buffet, or rather go and get a smaller ice cream from Paul made ice cream, which was just like a small walk from the restaurant. And after one hour of deliberating, we decided to go to Paul's Homemade Ice Cream. I opted for a new flavor, which was cookies and cream, and I didn't get disappointed. That was all that I had for that evening because I was so full when I get home. I swear I could not even like walk straight. I was like walking hunched over to get into my dad's car and then come back home. So it was super filling and I really enjoyed my evening. On Sunday, we tried a TikTok snack my sister was raving about for like the last three months. And basically it is a jalapeno which is stuffed with some cream cheese, flaming hot nacho cheese Doritos with a squeeze of lemon. I had one of them. Most TikTok things are overhyped and actually not that great, but this was 10 out of 10. If you guys can try it out, I would 100% recommend it. And since I only had one of these, I actually got hungry about like an hour and a half later. So I ended up having a small bowl of yogurt with granola not as much as I usually do and it didn't have fruit or nuts like I usually did but just something to keep me sustained until we went to the restaurant later on I actually don't really go to that many restaurants on a weekend I try to go maybe like at least once usually because the weekend is the time that I get to spend a whole day with my family or with my friends because in the weekday I'm super busy with YouTube and also university but it just so happened that this weekend on both days I ended up going to a restaurant which I didn't control happening but I'm not complaining. <laughs> and the reason why my family and I went to a restaurant on Sunday is because for the last three, okay not three I'm exaggerating, but for like the last I guess four or five weeks I've been really really craving dosa which best can be described as an Indian pancake or really thin and crispy crepe which is made from fermented rice and lentil dal and it sounds a bit weird saying fermented rice and dal but trust me you will never ever be complaining it's like one of my favorite foods and it is usually served with a side of three different condiments usually a tomato -y gravy a sambar which is like normal dal but a bit more spicy and has vegetables in it as well as a coconut chutney and i always eat up all three and finish whoever's condiments are left over so i can finish my dosa dosa can be stuffed with anything from paneer to chicken tikka masala to potato but i opted just for a plain one because my family ordered so many other things going back to dosa though it is one of my favorite indian dishes which says a lot since i'm indian and i eat indian food almost every single day of my life um <laughs> But dosa is one of my favorite Indian foods just because it is so simple and tasty with such a little amount of ingredients and it's definitely a good choice if you're looking for something to ease you into Indian food. It's not always that spicy depending on how spicy the sambar is which you can again always ask your waiter but usually it is very mild and the other thing which is great is that dosa usually is naturally vegan because the dosa itself isn't made with any eggs or any milk or anything like that the only thing that can possibly make it non-vegan and just be vegetarian is if the dosa itself is made on a thava which had clarified butter which is ghee or normal butter 
but always just ask your waiter what they cook with and you can always request them to put it on a separate pan as well as just ask what your condiments are because sometimes the condiments can change or the side dishes can change with what they give the dorsa with Anyway, I had that along with some pani puri, which is my favorite food of all time, I think. Which is basically an Indian street snack that is popular all over India, no matter what state you're from. And it's again like a sort of puri, although it's a bit different from the puri pata, which I explained to you guys previously. It is a thinner, bubbled version of a puri that is super light. Inside, there's a range of fillings. In ours, there were some potatoes, but sometimes there might be chickpeas. And there is always usually mint chutney, tamarind chutney onion and some greens inside and you fill that up with pani which is like a spiced water i guess and you put the whole thing in your mouth and you have it pani puri is as i said found all over india and it goes by many names such as puchka and golgapa but most people know it as pani puri but this is definitely one of my favorite dishes across any cuisine just because it's fun to eat and it is so 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 tasty I then had a small portion of the veg biryani my mom ordered, which if you don't know what biryani is, it's like the Indian's rice dish or rice staple, you can say. And it's basically rice that is cooked with potatoes, whatever other vegetables you want. Sometimes there may be protein and it's a vegetable one in which you would have paneer, which is Indian cottage cheese. And it is usually served with some dal, which I mentioned earlier, a side salad as well as something called raita, which you'll find with a lot of your Indian meals, which is basically acting as a cooling agent to all the spices. And it's just a yogurt sort of condiment that may have some cucumber in it and some coriander or dhania, as most Indians call it. And that is what biryani is. So I had a very small portion of that so that I could try everything. And then my mom also ordered a thali plate for the whole table to share. A thali is basically a plate with different smaller bowls of curries, dal, salads, condiments, breads such as naan or roti and rice as well as with the small dessert. So for instance, we had naan, paneer makini, dal makini as well as some kheer which is a sweet rice pudding you can call it. To eat with all of this, I had one glass of a passion fruit and lemonade. And for the rest of the time, I just had tons of water. And then to finish off, I'm pretty sure all of you know by now I'm a tea lover, but so is every other Indian person on the planet. And so going to an Indian restaurant or even having an Indian gathering at home, a meal is like incomplete without having chai in specific masala chai, which is basically tea that is brewed with a whole lot of spices such as star anise, cardamom, and cinnamon so that's what i had afterwards and i also forgot to tell you guys i also had some papad with some tomato and tamarind chutney as well as some mint chutney and if you don't know what papad is or papadum i think most of you would know what it is it is a really thin cracker or flatbread that is got like a spiced dough that's sort of dried up and it's super crispy and it's super super fun to eat to start off your Indian meal and most restaurants actually give it as like a complimentary starter when you come in and that's what this restaurant did as well. I couldn't really eat for like the next seven hours and so I didn't really eat anything and kind of just stayed in a food coma on my bed if I'm being honest but no regrets here at all. So instead when I did feel a little bit hungry I just had a nachi as well as some popcorn on the side. So that is what I eat on a weekend. Obviously every weekend does not look the same but you guys get the gist of it. I do tend to have food out at least once on a weekend just because that's how I spend time with my family and friends and I also tend to eat a little bit more just because I am at home and I'm not distracted by doing work all the time. But I really hope that you guys got some really nice ideas for what you guys can eat or some really cool restaurant names that you guys can go to as well. The name of the Indian restaurant that we went to was Taste of Punjab in Sunning Hill. So that's where we went, but you can get the same food at almost every single Indian restaurant. This is obviously just how I personally eat and obviously it differs from person to person. Everyone has different things that agree with their body, different amounts of food that they eat. This is just what works for me. And I also hope with this video that you guys got some appreciation for the Indian cuisine. I know a lot of you might immediately think of like butter chicken and naan when I speak of Indian food or even dal and like rice. But the Indian cuisine is so vast just because there's so many different cultures and obviously a lot of people in India. So the cuisine's different from region to region, not even just like from state to state. And especially South Indian food doesn't really always get the recognition that it deserves. So I hope that you guys got some ideas of what to eat the next time you go to an Indian restaurant. 
as well as I hope some of the stuff is stuff that you haven't heard of before and really opened your eyes out to how big and delicious the Indian cuisine is. I just wanted to remind you guys that if you feel for something, please go and have it. Obviously, too much of something isn't always good and you should balance it out with whatever else you eat in a day. But don't be hard on yourself if you're craving or eat something that society doesn't deem as healthy. I actually have a huge motto in my life, which is that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow so go and eat the cake or the ice cream that you want you don't want something to happen and you'll never be able to eat that again and stuff like that and i know it sounds a bit like morose when i say that but it's really really true i think a lot of people restrict themselves their whole life from having something and then either they just break down and like everything under the sun or they just go through life not being content with what they eat or having a good relationship with food but i've just learned that if you're craving something go for it and don't put yourself off obviously just balance it out with like maybe exercise or eating healthy and also maybe drinking more water so you can digest it better so yeah i just hope that you guys take away that message from this and also have some ideas for meals that you might want to have in the next month or so but i hope that you guys have a wonderful week filled with lots of love happiness light positivity and amazing food love you guys bye